Well, here's the first one for us, folks. 2012. It's the Mini. It's got the big one six. Uh, it needs some rear brakes. Not a big Mini guy, so I don't really know much about these things. Uh, I do know, however, the rear brakes aren't functioning. The brake rotors are just solid rust. And when I took this caliper off to give her a little inspection, see what he's going to need. The caliper is seized right up tight, like tiger tight and it doesn't, the boot ripped off it. So I got us some calipers, some pads, some rotors, and we're gonna get after it. Well, this is old Bethany, I couldn't do this whole uh, video using me English accent. And so I thought about that for a bit, and I, I tried her a wee little bit and was gonna throw in some Cockney rhyming like the old fork and knife told me. And then uh, I come to the conclusion, I couldn't tell if I was from England, Scotland, or Australia. So. Uh, we're going to skip that part. We're going to pull that little guy out with your classic T50 uh, and then see what it takes to uh, remove this bracket here and then get the rotor off. No, look at that. All right, so what do we have back here? I grabbed a couple. That's a guess. I grabbed a 15. That feels too big. All right, too so big. 15. I guess I'm going to stick my head back here and actually have a look. Looks like probably a 17, I'm guessing. <laughs> no sir. Must be 16. 16 millimeter socket has to be about brand new. It's not something the guy uses very often. I came off a little quicker than I expected. Well, here we go. Got everything out of the floor. Fantastic. Here's your caliper bracket. Now I know I've already started this process, as they say in Canada. But we'll do the other side and you'll see what that's all about. Give this rotor a little massage. Whoa. Come right apart nice. We have our needle nose here. So we can't uh, get the little clip here off the parking brake. So there's that little fella off the parking brake cable. I don't know if she sees up. Oh, no, she's good. We can still get that off. So it's, uh, see if I can't do this one handed. The one handed handy, probably not. I need to go get something that's sticking that uh, slot there so I can do this one handed. There we go. Now we can get the cable off. Let our caliper back out. See if our brake cable wiggles out of there. And then all we have to do now is hook the brake hose. We got some 14 mm. I don't know if I got enough uh, strength to hold this sucker and just give her a squeeze. Really, nothing for me to leverage to my advantage here. Let me uh, come up with a process here. Ideally, what a guy should do, if he knows he's changing the caliper, is crack that little fella loose before you take the bracket off. But I didn't know. There we go. Or just not be a complete wuss bag. Let me go get a uh, bucket here to stick under that thing. Here we are. Give it your classic spin. This is a typical Chrysler boot right here. The threaded in brake hose. And I guess Ford does some of this too. Kind of a pain in the hoo hoo. Because it's just a double flare on the end of that, is all that is, you know. So there's your caliper. Like I say, somebody at some point maybe did a brake job and wadded the you know the boot all up. And uh that's what happened there. So then the piston gets all seized up. These are screwy pistons if you guys, you know, if you're doing them. We'll see what the other side holds for us. Let me go get the uh, comment generator. Ta da! There she is. She should have its own music. Here I am. I put 7,000 pounds of pinching force against that thing to stop the drips. Yes, I know if I step on the brake pedal, it will also stop the drips. And what else? Well, this isn't a banjo, so we can't stick a belt stem in it. I also know that hose pinch players work great and they don't cause any problems. Believe it or not, this hose will hold back about 3,000 PSI of normal braking pressure. So, the one pound outward force that I put on it to simply stop the flow 
it's not going to hurt it. So calm down. Now this is where the fellas across the pond got it going on right here, boys. No wheel studs. <laughs> You ain't cleaning up some domestic pile doing that. Uh, otherwise, we hate them. Huge bang when you're changing tires, let me tell you. And they're falling off on the ground. And they're, they're, I know they make some pilot things from them, but we don't work on enough Euro cars to justify owning those tools. But when it comes to cleaning the hub face, you can't beat that. Every little spritz of the film. This box looks like <laughs> maybe Napa's had this box since the early 2000s. I haven't seen a plain white brake rotor box from them in many a moons. Rotor's not rusty, so that's good. The old school packing. They've redesigned all their packing now, so all the rotors come through rusty. <laughs> they vacuum seal them, have an anti-rust paper in there, plus a silica packet, and it's the rustiest rotors they've ever sold, which is kind of ironic because these old ones that used to come packed with oil were rarely rusty. The only time these ones were rusty is if somebody got them and sent them back and had their greasy paw prints all over them. So we're gonna whack that little screw down there with a number one snugga dugga. <coughs> Sounds aggressive. Here. Right there, that is a snugga dugga. It's got some pads from Napper. The silent guards. Hopefully they're correct. I don't believe we've seen many options. We had to get some calipers from the Advanced Auto. I haven't bought from them in a long time. The CarQuest Premiums. CarQuest Advanced Auto. Depends what kind of box they come in, I guess. I don't know if it's Advanced Auto anymore. Or Park quest. Not sure. Either way, same junk, different colored box. Doesn't matter who you buy it from, I guess. All the way from China. These are from Mexico. Looks nicer than the one we have now, huh? That's got the boots. So we'll throw all this stuff in the core box, send it back to a foreign land. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to have to move you guys. Easy, easy. Let's peel them out. To the side. We better check our pins, make sure they're gooey. Put the boots on all the way. Yeah, they're pretty gooey. Well, you can hear it in there. All right, looks like our pad will fit in there, does it? Like a glove. Let's see if any of these pads are different. The one side does have a wire wear sensor on it. Electronic, this side is different. So it's got the bulge. It's all bulged out, I imagine, based on our clues that the bulge is gonna have to go on the inside because that's where it's reliefed on. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll make sure I was telling you right. Yeah, the bulge uh, on the back of the pad. I believe it said this in Surface State also when I read it briefly. Uh, that the bulge pad is the one I think that holds the wire wear sensor and then uh, naturally goes on the inside because that's the only way they're going to fit. So that's how they're going to go. Regular pad, pad with the bulge. Okay. Now that we've clarified that, let's grab us some uh, lubricant. We're gonna use some silly ceramic here. Put a little bit underneath our clips. We'll spread it around. So 
So there's that, we'll set that down. We're gonna use the hardware that came with the Napper pads. Uh, good quality hardware comes with their pads, to be honest with you. So there's that. We're going to put the one with the bulge, remember, on the inside. We'll slip that baby in, we'll fit nice. The non-bulgy one will go on the outside. There it is, that's that. Just like that, we're gonna squish them together here just a little bit. Okay, we'll save that for the other side. We will take our caliper. We're gonna put a little grease on this baby. It even states this in service data, which I thought was amazing. You don't see this too often, unless it's a Honda or a Toyota. But apparently many finds the importance of greasing the piston face as well as the outer part of the caliper which is great and then we're going to slip that i'll stick this right up here this is not product placement it's just a prop to prop it up gosh that's all confusing i don't care what brand parts you use so there's that and then we'll torque these down to the proper fig newton Which is, let me look on my sheet over here off camera, off to the side. You guys think I memorized all this, but I don't. I actually printed it out yesterday when I thought I was going to work on it yesterday. This is, their service day is very confusing. But uh, let's see, brake disc to wheel hub, contact face between brake disc, wheel hub, clean and grease free. Oh, that was a little screw we put on there. Oh, and make sure you replace that screw. It tells you replace it each time, so make sure you replace that. Brake caliper to wheel carrier, guide screws, hexagon screws for the R55. And the 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61. Sounds like a Johnny Cash song right there. So I think that's chassis numbers. The thread is a WAF 13, whatever the frig that means. Replace self-locking nut or micro encapsulated screws. Nobody knows what that means either. 35 fig newtons. Seems about right. Let's bust out the torquey wrench. <laughs> or uh, most bolts that I see, what are these? Eight millimeter, probably. Yes, they look like eight millimeter in the United States of America. Most of them that we do are somewhere between 20 and 25 foot pounds. So we're going to switch this over to Fig Newtons. And it says 35 of those, which is equal to 25.8 pound feet of torque. See, so we could have just took a guess. Or, if you live in reality, just give it a little snug. Just a snug, just snug it up. Don't be an idiot. Don't go too much, and don't go too little. Okay, hang right on that. We're crushing the box. There's 25 of those. 25.8 to be exact. And then, a lot easier to do on the car. And there's that, 20. 5.7, so we're just, just shy. 35. So there we go. Let's go slap this baby on and then we'll put our hose on and everybody's going to be happy. Put your hose on before you put this on though, because otherwise, well, you know, it ain't going to work. So we'll take this little plug out of the back. Oops, drop it directly on the floor. Probably should check to make sure our threads were good before we did all this. Oftentimes you get these rebuilt calipers and we're just rebuilt parts in general and the threads are all frigged up. Wow, we could have done this more of a back backwards way, couldn't we, fella? So we're gonna spin this on here. Get her to the point she's about to snug up. Because you can finish snugging it on the car. Because once it, once she makes contact, you're not going to take it much further. So there we go. Unhook your comment generator, which is right there. And if you got a pigtail curly cue in the hose, there's not a lot you can do because, well, it just is what it is. It's at where it's going to be at. But not a big curly cue in this one. So that's good. Uh, let me grab a little lock top. We can lock tighty these babies and we'll see how many fig newtons these are held out with. 
So we're gonna stick a little of the blue Loctite because we don't want these wiggling out. These are pretty small bolts. These are only 10 millimeter bolts. And there's an option here for the amount of Newton meters, whether it's a 10 or a 12 millimeter bolt, or if it's an R60 or 61, I guess that's the type. But these are 10 millimeter, rest assured. How do you know? Simple, 10 millimeter wrench fits over the threads. 12 would be too big. So you see what I'm saying? That's a quick and dirty, quick and dirty way to tell what size are my bolts. Doesn't give you the thread pitch, but it'll tell you if it's a 10 millimeter bolt, if you're struggling to look at it and say, is that a 10 millimeter bolt? A lot of people on the internet, on the YouTubes, as my mother-in-law calls them, you still making them YouTubes? That's what she'll say. She doesn't talk like that actually. But uh, they will call a bolt like this the size based off the size hex, which in this case is a 16. Rest assured, this is not a 16 millimeter bolt by any stretch of the imagination. It takes a 16 millimeter socket, but it is a 10 millimeter bolt. So let's just clarify that. There's one super duper popular channel on the internet. Yeah, the guy always calls it the fastener by the hex size. It's not a pet peeve of mine, because I don't really have a pet peeve. I don't have time for pet peeves. Pet peeves are stupid. I have a pet peeve about people having pet peeves. So there's that. Let's uh, crank her down. 65 newton meters. I'll give you the conversion here once I do the math. You just got to bear with me. It takes me a while to do math in my head. I'll tell you, let me just think about it for a minute. 65 it says, which is I think approximately, yeah, 47.9. That's what I was thinking, 47.9 pound feet of torque. That's what I was thinking. I need an extension. Let's get up in here now, boys. Oh, went too far. Went <laughs> way too far. There we go. And that is 47.9 foot pounds. Let's we'll double check it. She should be tight. Oh, she's tiger tight. And if you don't have a torque wrench, you know what you do? Use your noodle. Uh, there's that. Of course, you're going to want to torque down your brake line. Line. <laughs> At this point too you don't have to murder this thing okay just mm, give it a mm, mm, one of and then you'll be good oh man did we screw up no we didn't no ma'am that's how you're supposed to do it right there boys just like that boys and then you guys are always inconvenient you guys are inconvenient. You guys are a pet peeve. You're always in my freaking way, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Why won't why won't you go through all the way, little fella? There, oh, you're almost there. You're almost there. Who's a big boy? Oh, that's what I'm talking about. They got that cable stretched tight. It's because the suspension's ripping down here at full droop, that's why. She's full drooped out. That's what the Jeep people say. She's full droop. Get in there, jerk. Well, let me go. Uh, You don't piss me off now, boy. Let me move the camera here, it's not too nasty. What is it like? I guess it is proper installed. I had to look it up because the, the other side, they've got it, the retaining clip is twirled around towards the inside. I have no idea how they got it in there. And so I was just trying to mimic that, but I'm gonna end up destroying it. 
because it fits great this way. I mean, you could slide that baby right in. So I looked up in service data. They call this the Bowden cable, B-O-W-D-E-N cable. And that's just the style cable it is. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Had to Google it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I found in service data, they show a picture of this in this exact orientation with the bracket. So we're good there. Uh, let me just bang out the other side and we'll get this bled out. Now on this side here, the only thing that's gonna be different is our electronic wire wear sensor, which isn't hit the road, hasn't hit the road yet. I don't know where it's supposed to go. It's just kind of hanging out back here. I assume there's probably some sort of missing hardware or something. I don't see, I do see that the boot on the piston is all wadded up in there though. So we're likely gonna need a caliper on this side too. So to be a couple of smart guys, yuck, yuck, yuck. We're gonna crack the brake hose loose here first. <laughs> and then, so we'll leave that just barely tight. And then the other thing we'll do is we will release the, the clip retaining our Bowden cable, which I've already kind of half taken out because like I say, it was twisted around and wedged against this little piece here, which you can't see. I've got it off camera so nobody can see it, which is, which is great. It's not great. So we're gonna take this clip off because they've got it really jammed in there. Got it jammed in there right proper. There we go, get her spun around where we can get to it. Now she'll pop right out. There it is. So we'll take that clip out. We'll save that for the reinstallation of the Bowden cable. I'm gonna call all parking brake cables Bowden cables, just based off their style. I guess a throttle cable would be a Bowden cable based on the Google description. So there's that. Okay, there's that. Yeehaw. Let's find the other end of this connector. So there's a connect the connector sits up in here. And then, I don't know if you guys can see or not, but the ABS wire also goes up in here, and this is just kind of laying here. But there's a holder right here that's not broken. I assume it goes into that. It's just whatever jolly old chap had a go at this lad. Uh, that's probably not the proper term. Probably just didn't put it back. Let me see if we can't figure out the connector. Oh, there we go. Not really up on my English terminologies. That's a neat connector. Quite interesting. Quite interesting, okay, well, let's uh, follow this back. Get her unhooked. And it goes here on this. Up in here, up in here, come on. Gosh, I feel like such a wisp bag today. I've got no strength. Some days are like that. There we go. Pop out of there right good it does. Out of there, out of there. Am I undoing the ABS or am I undoing? Let me make sure we're undoing the right thing. Nope, we're undoing the wrong thing. I thought so. I thought I might be because I remember looking in the package and seeing that the brake hose had, or the brake wire had that stuff on it. So let me uh, <laughs> plug this stuff back in right good. And then plug the other connector up there, which looks just like this one, but it's white. <laughs> Idiot. Well, now that I've unplugged the correct one, <laughs> we'll run the new one through here and see what, uh, what appears to look good. Sorry, it's the best place to run this. It kind of stinks that somebody's already been up in this joint. We don't really know the proper routing. And we know that these clip on here that probably should go out and around the outside of that. And like I say, the connectors were up out of their holders there. Once I get this routed, I'll show you where we ended up. It's obvious where these clip on the ABS, but we have a bit of extra wire here. And then, you know, the ABS wire and stuff, I can see where it's been rubbing up here on the body. I think the wisest thing to do is we're gonna find a place to wire tie it because we certainly don't want some rubbish. <laughs> Not trash, but rubbish like rubbing 
I guess would be the proper term. And then where this comes around the break, not real sure either. It was just kind of laying back here. I, like I said, I assume something is missing, but here's what it is. Isn't it always is what it is? It always is what it is. Okay, I believe that can be stuck in the pad after everything's mounted, so we're gonna call this all good. Let me find a spot to wire tie the two wires together here, just so they're not rubbing on the suspension as this is back here doing what they do. Yeah, I just put a couple zip ties on that harness. I don't, like I said, I don't really know. And then, like I say, I think once our new pads are here, we can boop, boop, clickety click. We'll click it right in there. Uh, changing the caliper on this side otherwise is exactly the same. So I'm not gonna bore you with that because we already just did it on that side. Uh, so we're gonna pinch off our hose, unbolt the caliper, put the new stuff on, and then we'll click this in and get it all bled out. So she's all in there with a full amount of Newtons. And it appears that the brake wire wear sensor here is a one-time clippy-do. All right, and it has to go this way, the fat side facing the rotor. And then we're gonna line that up and we're just gonna give it a little push. Push, push, push. Push, push, click. There she goes, she clicked in and that's it. It's just in there forever until eternity. And I think, because I don't know what's going on here. I definitely don't want this getting wadded up down here in the parking brake. This car is manual. So they probably use their parking brake, but we need enough slack per se for this to go all the way in. It's going all the way and uh, you know, grind through it when the pad's about half wore out and turn the light on. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna put one zip tie around this brake hose to keep it here so it has enough wiggle room and it doesn't get bound up in the parking brake. And then now we just need to bleed the brakes out. I'm gonna do that after I bleed the brakes because this will be right in the way of the bleeder. Actually, it won't, I can move it. So let me uh, zip tie that before I forget and then we'll bleed them up, but that's it. That's the only difference over here on the right side is just follow the wire up, unclip it. If you're lucky like me, the connector is completely destroyed. So you just essentially pull it out. Are you in there and ready, Mrs. O? Yeah. Get the bleeder cap off here. Is it a 10? Break! Got the wrong size we'll wrench. Is it European? No, it's a... Uh, no. It's not. I just grabbed the wrong size. Get that one back. Let's go with 11. Mm. I'm try this size. Can't believe you're showing this. Showing what? That you're working on a mini. Well, I told him I was going to do my English accent. English, English. Yeah. Uh, then I told him that I couldn't decipher my own English accent, whether it was English, Scottish, or a bit you Australian. You're going to do it for him? I didn't do it for you him. You need to at least finish the job in it. No. So they can judge you. Well, I got me Spanner. We'll go back to the back <laughs> here by the boot. I don't know what they say about bleeders. <laughs> you ready, old girl? Ready. Push me brake pedal down. <laughs> <laughs> Is it down? Yeah. Up. <laughs> so you can't handle it. That's why we're not doing it. Down. Push down. Push me pedal down. It's down. Oh. <laughs> I don't have any brake lights back here. Up. Oh. That's weird, step on the brakes. Yeah, no brake lights. Must be got the key on these things. That's super unsafe, right? Are you down or up? I'm up. Okay. Okay, push down. Up. Down. There we go, a little fluid there now. Up. Down. Okay. Go ahead and pump them up there. This is all. They should start getting stiff here in a little bit. You're going to have to. She's taking up the slack and the calipers now that the fluid's there. All right. Go ahead and hold them down. Crack this baby loose again. 
little bit of air. Up. Down. A little more air. Up. Down. All right, she's pretty steady there, so let's go get the other side, make sure that's good, don't come clean our mess off. Uh, yes, ma'am. You couldn't hear what I was thinking? <laughs> huh? No. Oh. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Down. Up. Down. Got a little bit of air there. Oh, again. Up. And down. All right, how does it feel, baby? Feel pretty good. Feels like a mini. Feels like a mini. Oh, nice. You're pushing the right pedal, right? Appreciate you. Thanks, old girl. Somebody in the comments says I shouldn't call you old girl. That'd be disrespectful to you. Oh. But new girl just doesn't have the same ring. You know what I'm saying? Do you have any input for us on that? Why do you think you can't tell somebody sad about being an old girl and an old girl? Oh, if you were sad about it? Yeah, it's like... Are you sad about it? No. <laughs> I've called you old girl forever. I <laughs> don't think of like, I'm so old, why do you always remind oh. me? Of but when you're like in your 90s, if I'm like, come on, old girl. At least the girl part is kind of, you know, it's like balancing out the old part. If you were an old woman, like an old girl. Well, sometimes if I use woman, I just call you a plain old woman. Like, <laughs> come on, woman. <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. Anyhow, oh, I gotta wipe that. I just call you old boy. No, he see, old boy. not old man. Here we go. I gotta talk to my old man. I gotta talk to my old boy. The old man. I, the old weird. man. I think like your dad, like my old man. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a common dad thing. Like if you're, if you're the just old. Just don't call me mud. Oh yeah, we got them old customers, and oh. them old people that come in here. It's like, well, I gotta go home and check with mother. Don't want like, you. Your mother even mother. alive? Oh, speaking of, there's an old lady in the office. Oh. Remember the, the dinger's not working. You were gonna fix oh, it. Oh yeah. You gotta fix the dinger. There we go. Make sure you fill that little guy back up. We did close the lid, and I think we can close the hood down. I'm just saying, wow, interesting looking hood. Got the big holes in it. Perfect. That way, where sensor will stay out of the way, we don't have to worry about it getting caught over here. And then there's enough slack for it to, you know, go all the way in and hit the rotor when the time is necessary. Um, however, I imagine these will all be rusted apart long before the wire wear sensor ever ever hits. Surprised I don't see a backing plate. Uh, maybe these don't have backing plates. Or maybe it did at one point and now it's just MIA. Oh, and the other thing I noticed that we forgot to do. <laughs> we forgot to wipe the schmoo off the uh, brake orders, idiot. Totally forgot that. So not used to getting the ones that come coated with oil anymore. But anyhow, yeah, let me wipe those off, throw the wheels on. We gotta go for a rip before our next appointment shows up. Get that thing up. Make sure the other one's up all the way. All right, it's out of gas, so that's good. Find the reverser. Well, let's make sure we have brakes. Oh yeah, we have brakes. I knew she wasn't lying to us. All right, let's go take it for a rep down the wrong side of the road. Let's see, it's gonna be kind of difficult to do here. I'm just hanging on to you guys. Maybe I can shift with my left hand. Proper English style. Ready, right, left handed shift. Look at that. Maybe that's why they do it that way. Oh, that's interesting. The, the clicker doesn't say click down. Huh. Alright. Never drove me a mini before.
way very much because my left foot is going really, really slow. I don't think this car is really meant to be driven with boots on. My boot, the gas pedal and the brake. I got just enough room to get it over here to hit the gas without hitting the brake at the same time. Makes it a little uh, funky to drive. He's fully functioning. Oops, slide that thing back. Give that a couple clickies. I guess she's good. I don't know how many miles this thing had on it. I'll turn this thing back on. 323, gives me a date. 139, 283, we gotta remember that. Let's get our key back, kinda funky. All right, well, it's only funky because we're not used to it. We don't know much about these things. The only thing I do know is I want you to go in that comment section. Leave me your questions, your comments, everything you've got. Put it down there. The Insta, the Facebook, you guys know what to do. If there's more viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.